Hey, what's up, gang? Terry here, and we're going to go over the absolute basics, fundamentals of what resonance is in chemistry. This is geared towards a general chemistry class or AP chemistry. It's not geared towards a dedicated organic chemistry class, as it's the main, just the fundamentals, total fundamentals of resonance. Uh, so let's begin. We're, we're going to jump into it. We're going to jump into it with an example of SCN minus. Now, if we draw the Lewis structure for it and see uh, SCN minus, that was a tough one, <laughs> uh, we might come up with something like this. Check out my video on Lewis structures if you're not sure how I got this structure here. So there's a negative charge here, but we could also draw another Lewis structure for SCN minus. Okay, so this would be another valid Lewis structure, and the negative charge in this case would be on the nitrogen because we have five, sorry, we have six owned electrons here, and there should just be, we expect there to be five if we count from the left, so it has one more electron uh, than it would be expected, so it's negatively charged here. Now, if they're both valid, which one is right? Well, your prof may say that this one is better because we have the negative charge on the more electronegative atom, but they're both valid Lewis structures, so you can't be wrong for writing either of them as a valid Lewis structure. But what is the actual structure of SCN minus? Is it this one or is it this one? Does it oscillate between the two? What does it actually look like? And to answer that, I'm actually going to pop up some colors here. Uh, so there's, we have this blue color and this yellow color. Imagine this is like one valid Lewis structure. This is another valid Lewis structure for the same compound. And what we're going to do with these two colors is we're going to merge them. And if anyone's played with crayons and you drew some sky into the sun, uh, you get green. Blue and yellow, they make a green color uh, when you mix them. And this green color, it's not oscillating back and forth between blue and yellow, right? It's not one or the other, or sometimes blue, sometimes yellow. It's a whole new color, green, uh, that has some blue-like characteristics and some yellow-like characteristics. If we reduced some of the blue, do you see what's going on here? It's becoming more yellow. So now there's less blue in here. It's hard to see the blue, a lot more yellow. Uh, but if we take away yellow, and we have more blue, then the green is going to start looking a lot more blue and a lot less yellow. But it's still a hybrid between the two of them. That's what's going on here. So we have two valid structures, and the actual structure is going to look in between, like between the two of them. Imagine these are mixing together. We indicate that using double headed arrows. And this double headed arrow, these double headed arrows, that doesn't mean that this the actual structure is going back and forth between these two it means we're like blending them together and when your prof says mixing together then your prof doesn't mean mixing like a heterogeneous mixture like you have a bunch of these and a bunch of these all mixed together mixing is like like you're mixing a cake a cake batter where you have some of this some of this it all blends together and then you make something new which is kind of a little bit of both of them that's what it looks like okay let's look at another example hco3 minus carbonate where you have the C is in the middle, and this is like the, just normal Lewis structure rules to get to here. Um, check out my rules if you don't know how to do that. Uh, almost valid Lewis structure. We need dots here. Okay, we could draw this another way. See how the double bond is going to this bottom oxygen here? Well, we could draw this such that the double bond is going to the top oxygen like here. And we have the single bond and the negative to the top one oxygen in this top structure. And in this bottom structure, we have the single bond and the negative charge on the other oxygen. And these are the same but different. <laughs> so here's the carbonate ion that I drew in mallview.com that you can find online. And this is the ball and stick model. This is carbon. These are the oxygens here. And I have the double bond going to the oxygen here, single bond to the oxygen here, there should be a negative charge here. And to turn this into the other structure where the double bond is up, all I need to do is rotate the molecule here. So, and then it looks the same. So these two structures where the double bond is going down, the double bond is going up, they're the same structure. But Let's say we change the color of one of these oxygen atoms here. Let's paint one yellow. Say we can take a paintbrush, paint one of them yellow. I know this is like bigger and stuff, but let's just pretend this is also oxygen and we painted it yellow. Now, if we rotate it, the one that's painted is still, still has a single bond, right? So there's still, in this case, no matter how much we rotate it, 
one oxygen will have a single bond, the other oxygen will, will have only have a double bond. And now the question is, what does the true structure look like? Does the true structure will only have a double bond in one of the oxygens, or, or what's going to happen? Well, we have this double bond is spread out, smeared out between both oxygens. It's kind of like you have this double bond is making this, this length between here. And then the negative charge is also distributed. So it's like this negative charge here is spread out throughout the oxygens, and the negative charge is spread out as well. So we have this partial double bond character in both of the bonds. And here's one last example to help you visualize what's going on in resonance. This is an example with O3 ozone. And one Lewis structure gives us this structure right here with the positive charge in the central oxygen and a negative charge in the outside oxygen. This has a resonance structure that looks exactly the same, but the negative charge on the other oxygen. And the true structure is a blending, a hybrid of these two, such that it looks like this in a way. So we still have a full positive charge on the central oxygen, but this negative charge is distributed, sort of smeared out, spread out amongst these two oxygens. So effectively, it's like having half a charge on each, each oxygen. All right, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this was super beneficial on helping you visualize or what's going on in resonance. If it was, let me know. And I'm, I'm excited to continue to help you on your chemistry journey. Check out my other videos. I got further videos on resonance to help you actually draw resonance structures and create them and, and own your game in the chemistry. Thanks again. See you in the next one. Cheers.